On October 3rd of this month, I had a dream that was given to me from the Holy Spirit, and when I woke up, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. I was also given an interpretation to this dream. Now, it is not my job to make you believe this. It is not my job to make you believe in Jesus or to repent. But this dream, when I woke up, came with a warning and for me to tell people what it was, what it meant, and what the Lord is doing. Now, it's the Holy Spirit's job to convict people, the Holy Spirit's job to lead them into all truth. But he has spoken to me and said, warn the people, tell the people. So if you accept this dream and it leads you closer to Jesus and to repentance, I've done my job. But if also you do not, um, it does not lead you to repentance or you don't come to Jesus. I've also done my job by warning people about, about this dream and about what the Holy Spirit is speaking and continues to speak. And so let me, let me tell you about this dream. When I went to bed that night, the dream that I had was this huge building, and I don't know if it was a church or a stadium, but there was a bunch of people there, like thousands. And there was a an very important person up front, which I knew happened to be the president of the United States. It wasn't Obama or a president that I knew, but it was a president of the United States. Now, all the people... In, in the front that were listening or going to listen to the president were people that had come that wanted to listen to him to see his action plan and for them to listen. The people by the president were bodyguards and of, of that sort and behind the president um, was an area of, uh, you know, a VIP area where his family maybe was and other um, officials, um, you know, government officials, other bodyguards and people of that sort that were very important higher up people. You had to be a VIP to be back there, right? And so my job was something like um, a helper maybe at this event. I'm not sure exactly what I was doing, but something to the extent of helping or ushering people, helping them in. Something more like crowd patrol, but I wasn't a, a bodyguard or anything. Well, I, I was helping out with this event. I was walking around the back listening to the president um, listening to the president give his speech and talk and whatever else he was doing. And I was walking in the, in the back when um, the bodyguards let a young man come through the door into this building. And um, the young man comes up to me and he's in a big hurry. And, and this guy, the young man, when I say young man, I mean he was somewhere between the ages of maybe 18 and 30. I'm not sure exactly what his age was, but he was really slick. He, he had on an entire um, suit and tie and was dressed up really nice with his hair slicked back, you know. And he comes up to me and he says, I need your help. Um, I'm supposed to be up right after the president and I'm supposed to be playing my guitar. But I forgot my guitar. I need your help. So he, he um, you know, grabbed me um, at the hand and I said, okay, I, I, I will um, help you. Because, you know, it was my job to help at this event with whatever I could. That's what I was told to do. So I, I go outside with this young man, and he ends up forgetting his guitar and his amp or whatever he was supposed to bring to be up next after the president. And he's in this big fuss that he needs to get up there on, on stage or whatever. So I end up um, telling him, well, I have my guitar and I have my amp in my, in my car. So we go over to my car, get my amp, get my, get my guitar, and I give it to the young man. And I, I'm carrying my amp and um, he's carrying the guitar, and we go back into the building through the bodyguards, and this young man proceeds to walk straight up the middle aisle, um, because the only way you can get on stage um, and backstage, the VIP area, is going directly in front of the president. And the young man, he keeps on telling me, I'm up next, right after the president, I need to be in the VIP room, and I'm saying, but you're late and you're going to distract the president. Well, anyway, he, he decides he needs to be in the VIP room anyway. So he's starting to walk straight down the middle aisle, starting to distract people, and then he walks up the, the stage to get on stage, you know, the steps there, and he gets right on the stage and starts walking like he's going to go to the back door, right, to these bodyguards by the president, and I'm thinking, these bodyguards are going to shoot him with their guns or something bad's going to happen, and I tell him, hey, you're blocking the view of the president. And at this point, it's causing a distraction between the president that's speaking and the people that are trying to listen to him. And so the young man turns back to me and says, well, come, come with me, come with me. And I say, I, I can't. So I put the amp down there that I was carrying and I, 
and I sit down, you know, in, in the front uh, row there. And so the young man proceeds and continues to say, well, I got to be back there in the VIP room. So he grabs um, my amp and the guitar and he says, well, I'll, I don't want to get in the way of the president, so I'll just kneel and I'll bow down so the people can still see the president and um, that way I won't be a distraction. And I'm thinking in my mind at this point, you're going to still be a distraction because you're a dude crawling on the stage in front of the president as he's trying to give his speech. And sure enough, this guy in his, you know, in his suit and with his tie gets down on the ground, is crawling up on the stage, dragging the guitar and dragging the amp. And he, he's crawling with his tie dragging on the ground and everyone is now watching him and not the president. And it distracts Stephen um, the people in the president so much that the president has to address this problem. And I don't know if the young man was humiliated, but if I was the young man, I definitely would have taken a different course of action. He distracted the people from the president to the extent of where the president had to address it. That was the end of my dream. I don't know if the young man ever got backstage or if he ever got up there to perform or what. Now, when I woke up, a specific word um, was spoken to me from the Holy Spirit, and I wrote it down, and then the dream was interpreted um, after I prayed about it. But I'm going to read exactly um, what the Holy Spirit spoke to me in my spirit. As soon as I woke up, and I heard this, not, not in my ears, but I heard it in my spirit as loud and clearly as I am speaking to you now. But in my spirit, I heard it, and I wrote down exactly how I heard it, and I'll read this to you. The Holy Spirit said this to me, The end of all things is near. I am coming quickly, says the Lord of all. Warn them of the wrath to come, because many will not be ready. Many are not ready. Warn the people. Now, I didn't know at first what this dream meant, or, or what it was, and how this word from the Lord um, c connected to my dream or anything like that. And, and I prayed about the dream. The dream was revealed. The president, as you may have guessed, is Jesus Christ. Jesus addresses his people. He talks to his people. He is the president. He is the king, the Lord of lords, the Lord of everything. The people are the people who might be listening, might be distracted, but should be listening to the king. The people that are VIP behind the stage are... Um, people that are like um, angels, they're people who are servants of Jesus, um, they're the, the fathers in the faith, um, they're people that are already with Jesus, people, uh, you know, saints that have already died and stuff like that. Now, this young man represents someone who is elevating their spiritual gifting, or even music, or what they consider to be worship above Jesus and listening to him. Now, this young man had the best of intentions. He thought he was actually going to um, serve people and serve Jesus, which in fact, he was taking away from Jesus. He was taking away from, um, he was taking away from the president because he was distracting the people from what the president was saying, even to the extent of where the, he was blocking the president himself. We never want to block what Jesus is telling to people. Now, that's exactly what churches do today with their worship. They block, they get in front of what Jesus is saying, what the Holy Spirit is speaking to people by what they consider to be worship. They have their guitars that they're pulling up there and they think they're so important, but they're blocking the view of Jesus. And so what, what this word meant that the Holy Spirit spoke to me after was, warn the people, they're not ready. Warn the people that worship is not, you know, an hour, two hours on Sunday. It's not going to church. But worship means listening to Jesus, learning to be completely attentive to hear what he's saying, completely submitted to him, bowing down to him. Even if you're bowing down, but you still have these ideas that, you know, um, these ideas that you're going to offer him your kind of worship. I mean, a lot of people think they're going to play guitar and that's going to give their worship or they have this service or that service. Well, the truth is, if you're distracting people from coming to Jesus by that with your spiritual gifting, even if it's a spiritual gifting, you're elevating that spiritual gift above Jesus and distracting people. Just like that young man thought he was going to be helping people. That young man thought he was going to be helping Jesus. But I'll tell you in that dream, 
Jesus did not respect that man. That young man was distracting people from truly knowing the truth of what the president was saying and was not helping out anyone. Now, I hope that young man um, gets into heaven. I hope that young man in my dream, um, you know, whoever he represents, that Jesus forgives him, that he can go sit down, forget about his, um, his, you know, his worship set or being VIP. He was not VIP. If he was, he'd already be backstage. But I hope he figures that out soon. But here's the warning to you guys. It's just um, learn to listen to Jesus. Submit yourself to him. The way you do this is through prayer. You get on your knees. You give up your idols. You even give up what you think might be your spiritual gifts. And you don't elevate your spiritual gift above Jesus. You first and foremost, you tell people about Jesus. You place their hand in the hand of Jesus and say, sit down, shut your mouth, and listen to what the president has to say. I don't care if you are going to be going upstage to practice music. I don't care if you think you're VIP, a pastor, or anything. You need to be sitting down, shutting your mouth, and helping other people to do this too, to listen to what Jesus, the president of all, has to say. Thank you for listening.